a very good evening uh, to you all uh, dear brothers and sisters in christ so last week uh, we began our study with the uh, antichrist where we saw that uh, antichrist uh, is not a little human being who is going to come and literally sit in the temple of uh, a god that means in israel and uh, everybody will worship him how we saw that the word antichrist has got two meanings one is totally against christ and uh, other meaning is that uh, one uh, who is uh, using the name of christ uh, you see and in his name is uh, doing uh, things which are against christ uh, so two uh, meanings are there and we saw the meaning which bible uses is the second one that means so uh, one who is a christian doing things uh, which are displeasing to the lord and doing things uh, and preaching the doctrines uh, which are against the bible so we studied uh, how this antichrist was formed during the days of apostles itself uh, and uh, apostle john clearly mentioned in first john that uh, there are many antichrist uh, now itself uh. so by all this uh, things uh, we have come to know that antichrist is not a person but it is a corrupt religious system so the doctrines of devil which uh, sprang up uh, during the days of apostles itself uh, but it did not have complete liberty because uh, apostles were very strong in the truth they did not completely allow the devil to work uh, you see full hand uh, in the ministry but uh, we know that after uh, the death of the apostles uh, slowly the truth began to wade and uh, false doctrines began to crept inside the church so we saw about uh, how this uh, things uh, you see got inside the church apostle paul tells uh, that they will uh, come uh, see wolf uh, in sheep clothing and many of uh, people among you from you itself they will deceive many so dear brethren so these are the things uh, which we need to keep in mind when we search for the antichrist so we saw that uh, you see uh, the devil is deceiving everybody uh, putting the thoughts uh, that uh, antichrist is little person he'll come and put little triple six seal on their head and their hand but the bible says that antichrist is quite living uh, during the days of the apostles and uh, he will be completely annihilated only at the second coming of jesus christ anyway so we saw at the last in the two parables uh, the parable of the we see the mustard seed you see the where uh, uh, god's intention to sow the faith of christianity in the world was to gather a little flock but unfortunately it began to grow as a big tree a great organization you see <clears throat> now christianity has become so famous and so great uh, that uh, you see uh, the birds of the air came and nested inside it so birds of the air means uh, satan and evil doctrines and the false doctrines uh, that have crept uh, through the devil inside the churches uh. and uh, we also saw the second parable in the parable of the leaven where a little bit of leaven was taken and put it into three measures of flour until the entire leaven was uh, entire uh, flour was completely leavened so we saw that leaven in the bible means uh, false doctrines how the false doctrines uh, were put into the three important uh, uh, doctrines of bible love hope and uh, we see faith so all these three things got corrupted once the people uh, lost the love faith and hope on the lord so how did all these things began how did this great antiquist system develop if you see in the church history if you search we come to know that the church was established initially in five major places that is in jerusalem antioch egypt constantinople and rome we know about jerusalem because uh, that's the place when the disciples started the ministry and uh, antioch acts uh, 11 chapter is clearly given that uh, the christians were first called as uh, you see uh, the disciples were first called as uh, christians uh, in the place antioch it is also mentioned in the bible and alexandria egypt so alexandria is a place where the truth went on and the uh, you see churches were established there and rome also apostle paul wrote uh, 
we also went to rome so in this uh, five major places there were lot of churches actually as we gather today here and there you see uh, in the cottages in the houses similarly the majority of the church brethren were gathering there so each and every year, you see churches had a pastor you see a pastor or a leader to take care of entire affairs of uh, you see that uh, area that church <laughs> like for example in jerusalem there was not only one church but there were many churches and all this uh, pastors you see the elders of the jerusalem you see they came together and uh, they put one person above them that is all the pastors in jerusalem was represented by one leader and he was called as a bishop so that is how a bishop word actually crept uh, into this world you see bishop uh, uh, means uh, what uh, the bishop uh, pastor uh, all these things are the same name you see same meaning uh, different names but all have got the same meaning here the people did not uh, you see uh, understood it uh, clearly and the you use it as a title pastor so oh, pastor is lower than the bishop the bishop is greater than the pastor see what does jesus say if any man wants to be uh, rich what does jesus say to do mark 10:45 mark 10:45 uh, joel brother can you read for even the son of man came not to be minister unto but to minister and give his life or ransom for many ah jesus uh, did not come to be minister but he came to minister he did not come to be so that other people can serve him but he came to serve and give his life as a ransom so earlier the bishop the word bishop the pastor and all you see is to carry the meaning of a servant sir you see that means uh, the one who take us rent activities and uh, in all this uh, five major cities similarly the people elected bishops so many bishops were there if you see they were five bishops you see five bishops among them five major uh, places then these uh, bishops uh, you see to show the differentiation between them and the people what did they do they divided the church into two parts you see the people who administered you see and uh, all the done uh, all the activities uh, who took care of the administration activities who did the sermon <clears throat> praying you see blessings all the things uh, were done by the bishop then what about the people what are they called as the you see those were called as laity the church was divided into two the administration part the pastors the you see the leaders they were all called as the clergy and the laity the common people who come to the prayer every week they had no you see work no involvement in the administration activities because all those things was done by whom by the 77 people you see so these were called as the clergy and uh, under them was the laity the laity people the ordinary people they come and go it was uh, like uh, what happened uh, it was like uh, in a airplane if you go there is a business class and there is a economic class you know so differentiation began to come inside the church you see so what is the differentiation the clergy thought themselves to be high above everybody and the laity people also they considered them as very holy you see so hence what happened the bishop had that dignity had that pride and ego and he wanted to still more become great so hence what happened you see they began to you see put more titles and uh, 
began to add more dresses uh, to their name so that people may think uh, as them as very different from the common people read ephesians 4 chapter 11 to 13 ephesians 4 chapter 11 to 13 joel brother can you read <clears throat> And he gave some apostles and some prophets and so, some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perf perfecting of the saints ah, for the work. For the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. So yeah, you can see apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, everybody were given. What is the purpose of giving? You see. These are not the titles. Huh? Jesus never tell them to keep any title. These are all the work. But today what has happened? Instead of concentrating on the work, they are concentrating more on the title. So, as uh, they began to keep a title, you see, the people used to respect them a lot. And slowly what happened? Huh? You see, huh? there was a huge gap between this clergy and the laity. The clergy is treated as very holy people. You see, very righteous people. They were not like the sinners. You see, and uh, not everybody could come and communicate uh, easily with this, uh, you see, uh, uh, bishops uh, or uh, pastors. You see, they're considered as totally different. And uh, the people also began to call them as the same way. Pastor, you see. Huh? Then, huh? different titles are there now. Pastor, evangelist, evangelist, so and so. How are you? So, this is how they began to address her. So, this encouraged them to add more titles. Like what? Uh, father, Reverend, you see. So, these things, uh, they began to add next to the name. What does Jesus say? Can we call anybody as father except our earthly father? Read Matthew 23, 9 and 8. Matthew 23, 9 and 8. Uh, Munna, sister, can you read? But be not ye called Robbie, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren, and call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. You see, call no man as your father. For one is your father which is in heaven. So they clearly violated uh, this basic command which Jesus uh, taught us. Uh, call no man as teacher or master or father. You see, but today everybody began to put the title fathers. You see, pastor, evangelist. You see. In a proper sense, uh, we can say that uh, there is no evangelist today. Because evangelist is a person who goes and takes the truth to the place where truth is not there at all. But today, everybody knows about Jesus. Uh. So, this uh, is uh, against the word of God. Next, uh, saints. They used to put the, the name uh, saint. Uh, you see, against the name, they used to put the title as saints. Uh, saint so and so. You see, the holy father so and so. Okay. What does the Bible say? First Corinthians 1 2. First Corinthians 1 2. Um, Romy sister, can you read? Hmm. Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in. Jesus Christ called to be saint with all that in every place called upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Ah, uh, you see, done to the church of God that is sanctified by the blood of Jesus, called to be saints. You know, the word saint actually what it means sanctified ones, uh, you see, the pure ones. Uh, how are you sanctified? Uh? By our own deeds. Uh, no. By the deeds. Uh, no man can be justified. It's only by the blood of Jesus. That we are sanctified. Uh, we are justified. Uh. So why so special? Every believer. Everybody who believes in the blood of Christ. Are, are called to be saints. Uh. Why specially given this title only for them? 
you see and uh, they used to claim that uh, huh? between god and man who is the mediator oh, all these uh, saints are the mediators mother mary huh? saint uh, xavier saint anthony are all these people are what uh, they are saviors uh, you see they are the mediators uh, huh? between uh, god and man they were uh, acting like saviors uh, you see this was a clear violation of god's command first timothy second chapter 3 to 6 uh gopal brother can you read Brothers, which word? Second Timothy 2, 3 to 6. Right, brother? First, first Timothy, second chapter 3 to 6, brother. Okay. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Very good. One God and one mediator between God and man, Christ Jesus. So, what happened? You see, these were sanctified uh, huh? and the dedication was completely given to them. And next, uh, you see, this uh, began to encourage them to add more titles like reverend. You see, now who is reverend in the Bible? We already seen in the class of the Most Holy Faith. Can anybody tell me who is called as reverend in the Bible? Hmm? God. Very good, sir. God. Or God is called as reverend in the Bible. See, Psalm 711, 9, sister. Munashtar, please read Psalm 711, 9. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. See, holy and reverend is whose name? God's name. They began to put this title to themselves and call them as Holy Reverend Father. Huh? Right Reverend, Left Reverend, the Most uh, High Reverend. All these titles and all. You see, what does the Bible say? How is man created? Little lower than the angels. If man itself, perfect man itself is little lower than the angels, how can a sinner claim the title which is equal to God? This was totally against God's command, sir. They began to add these titles as a prefix to their name. We have seen in the Most Holy Faith class, you see, how prefix uh, work out. You see, who puts the prefix? Uh, it's a majority only doctors, uh, judges, uh, or uh, police persons. Uh. Why? To easily identify, they have put these titles. But today, you know what has happened? Uh, it became a fashion, you see. So, it was becoming a fashion to put the title to the name. So, dear brethren, so what happened? Uh, eh? As they began to put titles and all, people used to look them very high. You see, people used to look them very different uh, from all the common people. And uh, they used to wear costly dresses, grand robes. You see, grand dresses. Eh? When asked, uh, they should tell the high priest in the Bible used to wear the glorious robe, you see, with the golden girdles and the jewels upon it. So similarly, we need to wear all these things. And they began to, you see, wear grand things and come as if they're coming for a great exhibition. You see, it was nothing less than a cinema theater or a circus or a joker show. You see, dear brethren, wear different different types of clothes and everything's so worn, and uh, people come and demonstrate before everybody. This is how slowly the bishops used to do. And during that time, Rome was the capital of the world. But uh, Constantine, emperor, when he got converted to Christianity, you see, we he did not convert to Christianity because of faith on uh, Jesus. Uh, no. 
he actually was supposed to go for a war and it was a very difficult war and uh, on the way when he was going he saw a vision it seems in the sky and he saw a cross uh, saying to him that uh, go victory will be given to you so on faith uh, based on the vision he went to war and won the war it seems uh, and after the uh, returning from the war he inquired whose sign is it about the cross uh, then they told it is uh, jesus christ uh, is a sign of a christian so that is the time constantine got converted to christianity why not because he loved the lord because of benefits because of uh, this is so many things you see he got converted he did not have understanding of the bible he did not read the bible nothing you see just uh, for uh, this sake uh, he got converted and being the emperor what did he do he began to tell everybody you see that if everybody gets converted all the blessings will be given to them what blessings all the benefits will be given to them what benefits job will be given in the uh, empire marriages will be done sides will be given money will be given so because of this one only the people got attracted and got converted to christianity hence now you know if you tell that we have become christians what do the people say oh you you converted ah huh? how much did they pay you why because that is the way the work uh, is the world is uh, that is the way they do this uh, conversion so this uh, thought uh, you see of conversion actually began from those days uh, and as uh, he used to offer uh, uh, money job sites everything all the facilities everybody got converted to christianity and what happened the church began to be full of people remember how the church was you see in the church in jerusalem it was very small gathering in the people's house in the brethren's house you see it, everybody was gathering in the houses but when the people began to come or they could not be accommodated in the house so hence what happened the church was built now imagine if a uh, emperor is the one who is taking in charge of building the church how will he build a will he build a small church no based on his capacity based on his power he began to build big, big 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 cathedrals and if you go to europe and all there are lot of cathedrals you see why who built it actually these were all built by the emperor sir you see dear brethren so what happened all the pagan people began to come inside they did not have faith on the bible nothing they did not know anything about the bible so if they came into the church what was there in the church and nothing was there no function no celebration you see then the people began to go back slowly then the bishop start oh ho oh, if we leave like this one ha huh? constantil will close our churches so hence what happened to please the people to attract the people you know what happened ha eh? they began to follow all the rituals in their pagan religion they should do idol worship the same idol worship was done to mary their early in the morning they used to clean the idols you see wash it with water ha eh? and put flowers and put cloth and burn the incense and candle and all the things so the same way everything they did the for year jesus and jesus his mother mother mary so what happened ha huh? this is how the church got corrupt you see what happened the small mustard plant became a tree full of birds you see imagine so this is how what happened the Uh, church uh, began to gather now imagine if a uh, church has to be run if somebody has to run the church who has to run it it is the bishop who should take care of all those things and all because king is very busy he doesn't have time to think and meditate upon all this religious things and all and guide the people so entire responsibility was given to the bishop and the bishop Uh, how will he guide so many people thousands of people if he goes to the job then king told don't go to the job all your requirements will be paid by me 
then what happened uh, you see the church did not depend upon the people for offerings or fund they all depended on whom they all depend on the king then king thought uh, if a bishop is very far from the church uh, it will be very difficult to handle therefore next very next to the church itself uh, the bishop's house was constructed <laughs> imagine if a king does a construction how will he construct a small house a small hut he began to build a grand excellent uh, house behind the cathedral that's the reason if you go to any churches no you will find the bishop's house next there only no behind only why no all concept came from there only you see and you see huge salaries were given because uh, bishop has to take care no if he goes to work who will take care of the church and the people so king is to pay from his treasurer you see as a salary so what happened easily nice funds are coming na yeah, amount is coming no need to worry at all each and every person began to desire you see and get this office of a bishop why easy way to earn money no need to take efforts study well and all just preach the word of god few things you say automatically get lot of money so the many people coveted for this job of a father and a bishop so as these things were going on the capital of a roman empire was shifted from rome to constantinople by emperor constantine he was shifted to where constantinople so once the capital was shifted the people of rome they did not have anybody to solve their uh, uh, cases and support them and help them and guide them earlier king was there they used to approach the king king used to guide them and do everything but now as a king was missing you see the people were perplexed uh, don't know what to do then they all turned to the bishop of rome and approached him if they had any doubts any questions uh, you see any help they wanted they approached the bishop and bishop he took this opportunity to help the poor so what happened all the administration activities in rome was taken over by bishop bishop of you see rome because that was the old capital of the whole world so still uh, psychologically everybody had that idea that the Rome is the capital, and every important thing was asked by the uh, Rome bishop. So similarly, what happened? You see, after uh, Constantinople, just after Constantine, Justinian, one emperor came. Justinian, the emperor, he was a very orthodox, a very pious person, very religious person. He had so much of fear on God that. Uh, when he became the emperor of rome he could not take this title of being a chief religious ruler see roman emperor had two titles one a civil and one a religious title the civil title was roman emperor the religious title was pontifus maximus pontifus maximus is a latin word which means chief religious ruler so the king of rome emperor of rome was a chief religious ruler as well as a civil ruler but once uh, justinian came for this position he felt that he was unworthy to take this position of a you see what a uh, uh, position of uh, uh, chief religious ruler pontifus maximus hence uh, he gave this title to whom he gave this title to the bishop of rome you see the capital was again shifted to rome and bishop of rome was given this title because why everybody's psychology was that uh, rome was the capital and rome bishop was important so justinian also recognized that rome bishop is the main Now, what about the other four bishops will they keep quiet they did not keep quiet they began to fight and quarrel no no how come you without a permission you are giving to him we are there you does then justinian made a decree what i have said is said 
everybody should obey me. If somebody doesn't obey me, you see, we they will be punished. Then immediately what happened? The four bishops agreed to what Justinian has done. And that is the time that Justinian made the bishop of Rome as Pope. In Latin, it means Papa. That means for all your four bishops, he is the Papa, he is the head, he is the father. Now you should listen to him. So this is how, what happened here, brother, if you see, huh? the Bishop of Rome became the Pope. Pope the Great. Now all the bishops were sub uh, surrendered and uh, subdued to this uh, bishop. And that time, Pope is to put a lot of titles. So I'll give you some examples. Pontifus Maximus. What is this Pontifus Maximus? Chief religious ruler. Holy Father. Huh? What does the Bible say? If you say that uh, we are not sinners, uh, it means that we are deceiving ourselves. Uh, but these people began to claim that they are holy fathers. So pure and so holy. You see? Holy father of fathers is himself. First of all, calling a father is wrong. Calling a uh, you say father of fathers means what? Then chief pastor, pastor of pastors. You see, the holy, most divine of all the heads. You see, Christ by unction. All the title that belonged to Jesus Christ was owned by, you see, the Pope. Abraham huh, by patriarch. You see, and Melchizedek in order. Even Abraham paid Tithes to Melchizedek, everybody should pay to Bob, you see. And uh, Moses in authority, holy father of fathers, uh, you see. So, all the titles uh, eh, respected to God and God's son in the Bible was claimed by the Roman Emperor Pope. And uh, they used to wear the grand dusters, uh, as I told you. They used to quote everything from the scriptures, uh, misquoting from the scriptures, saying, this is how the high priest is to decorate, so there's nothing wrong. See, similarly, brethren, you see, huh, we all know that uh, that is the time that the uh, false doctrine crept also into the church. What types of false doctrine? Pope claimed that we had two keys of heaven and hell. If anybody disagrees to the theory of Pope, uh, they will go going to hell, hell fire, you see, and uh, uh, they used to sell indulgences. That means uh, the father who has died many years before, if he's in hell, if you pay the amount here, once the amount comes into the treasure box, immediately the soul of the father who is in hell will be transferred to heaven. So all these uh, fake things which are not there in the Bible at all was clearly, you see, proclaimed by the church. And uh, during that time, dear brethren, the Roman Emperor, the Roman Empire especially, was under the threat of the barbarians. Who are these barbarians? Frequently, there used to be war between the barbarians and the Roman Empire. The barbarians were uh, unorganized, uh, uncivilized people. But they were very gigantic. They were very strong. You see, the barbarians never cared for anybody. Whenever they used to come to fight with the Romans, they used to come with daggers, butchers, all the sorts of, you see, uh, tools and devices which they had in their house. And they used to come for, uh, you see, uh, war. But the Roman soldiers were well disciplined, neatly haircut, wearing shoes, uh, wearing uniform, wearing helmet, uh, coming on the, you see, horses, uh, having the shield uh, and buckler in their hand. But these people uh, <laughs> did not care about anybody. You see, they had this uh, big, big hammers. Uh, whenever they saw this Roman soldier, they used to just smite uh, them with their hammers. Uh, immediately, what will happen? Like their uh, head itself, uh, you see, was uh, completely gone. You see, they, it was completely open, or it was shattered, it was cut off. Seeing this, the Roman Empire itself, the Roman army itself, they were very frightened to go for a fight against these barbarians. 
So the emperor complained all these things uh, to whom, if you see, they complained to uh, the bishop, uh, the Pope of Rome. You know, what did the Pope do? The Pope saw all these uh, people, that they were very religious people, very orthodox people, these barbarians. Uh, they should never believe anything so easily. What did you do? One day, when they had come for the fight, uh, Pope came in front of them and said, in my left hand, uh, you see, in my left hand, there are, what is there? Uh, curses are there. So just uh, wave my hand like this, you'll all go to hell and fire, be roasting there forever and ever. See, I got uh, keys of hell and heaven. In my right hand is blessings. If I bless like this, you'll all be, you see, going to heaven. So, once he spoke all these things in the name of God, these barbarians were so superstitious people, they completely surrendered to the Pope. They surrendered whatever the Pope said. They agreed for it because they were very so religious people. You see, and the king saw what power this Pope is having. The entire Roman army could not defeat these barbarians. But just by few words, the Pope was able to convince this barbarian sir. So hence what happened? You see, the Roman Emperor had one title. Earlier, what title did he give to huh? Pope? Religious ruler title he gave. Now, he also gave the civil ruler power to Pope. That is the time Pope got both the powers, religious as well as civil. The government powers also was with him and the religious power also was with him. This is how Pope became the supreme one. You know, actually Pope, what did he do during those times? When he came to power, he used to throw whichever king you want. You see, he used to put some king, whichever he likes on the throne and whichever king he doesn't like, he used to be dethroned. You see, and he used to crown the kings whenever, whichever king he wanted. If anybody spoke against, they used to be killed. You see, and the emperors used to be so punished so heavily that everybody seeing the Pope got frightened. You know, one emperor, you see, disagreed to the Pope and uh, was uh, in, uh, did not come to the Pope's presence when he was called. But the next time when he was supposed to come, what did the Pope do, you know? Pope made the king naked and to stand in the snow for one day. And after that one, he was supposed to come inside the palace only by kneeling. He used to come walking by on his knees and come to the Pope, open the socks of the Pope. You see, remove the shoes, open the socks. And kiss the feet of Pope. You see, so these things the Pope did. All these things were done in the name of Christ. And whenever it was questioned, they began to quote the scriptures, you see, wrongly from the Bible. Like what? See, Psalms, second chapter. Psalms, second chapter. Joel brother, read Psalms, second chapter. Hmm. 11 and 12. 10, 11, 12, brother. Psalm 2nd chapter 10, 11, 12. Psalm 12, 10 to 12. No, no, no. 2nd chapter verses 10, 11, and 12. Uh, sorry, but which, which verse? You open 2nd chapter? Some second chapter, yes, brother. From verse 10. Okay. But, but, was now, therefore, O ye kings, be instruct, ye judge of the earth, serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling, kiss the son, lust be angry, and 
ये पेरिश फ्रॉम द वे वेन इज रेट इज कैंडल बट अ लिटल ब्लेसेड आर ऑल दे दैट पुट देअर ट्रस्ट इन हिम जिस दवा से यूज टू टेल टू पीपल सर द लॉर्ड विथ फेयर एंड रिजॉइस विथ ट्रेवलिंग किस द सन हु इज द सन ऑफ गार्डा पॉप हु इज टू क्लेम दैट ही वाज द सन ऑफ गार्डा डोंट किस द सन ही विल गेट एंग्री यू विल परिश इन द वे इटसेल्फ यू विल बी किल्ड दिस इज अ दे यूज द स्क्रिप्चर्स टू कन्विंस द पीपल सी साम सेड एंड टेन Psalms one and ten, verse five, brother. Hmm. Okay, Munasha, read Psalms one and ten, verse five. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. See, the Lord at the right hand, Pope. Ah, he shall strike the kings, the day of his wrath. Oh, if he gets angry, means he will even smite the king. You see, <laughs> so whichever king he wanted, he is to throne. Whichever king he dislike, he is to dethrone. This is how Pope ruled in this world as king and princesses, much even powerful than the emperors. Now, what did Jesus say about this one? Jesus said that when you see all these things, read in the book of Daniel for a better understanding. Read Matthew twenty-four fifteen. Matthew twenty-four fifteen. Romy sir, can you read Matthew twenty-four fifteen? When ye therefore shall see the abomination of uh, dis desolation sp spoken of by Daniel, the prof the prophet stand in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. Very good. Uh, you see, what did you say? Wherefore, uh, when you see the abomination that make it desolate. You see, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. When you see that abomination clearly standing in the holy place, uh, which is spoken by Daniel, what did Jesus say? Who so readeth, let him understand. So, if you want to understand more about the Antichrist, Jesus tells us to go and study and read the book of Daniel. So it is given where in the book of Daniel. Where is it given in the book of Daniel? It is given in Daniel seven chapter. Okay. So we are seeing, we are clearly able to understand that this is the abomination that make a desolator who is standing in the holy place, which is there among the church. So if you need to understand more clearly, we need to study the book of Daniel. So next week we will be studying Daniel seven chapter. It will be a very lengthy class. So, I request everybody to please study Daniel 7 chapter before coming to the class. Okay? So, okay. Now, has anybody got any questions, any doubts in today's class? Anybody, any questions? Joel, brother? No question, brother. Munaster? No, brother. Ramesh sir, Amar brother. No brother. 